بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد الله جل جلاله يسند سند this world and through أنبياء عليه مسلاة والسلام and the greatest نبي that has set foot on this earth has given us solutions to all our problems so we need to move from the worldly knowledge which is Dhani to the Asmani knowledge, the knowledge of the heavens which is not based on assessment, evaluation, trial and error but is Yaqini, is something which is definite and for sure and based on the strength of a person's Yaqeen. So we made Yahweh Dua but based on the strength of the du- person's, the reciter reading the Dua will it have an effect? So for example, a person has a, a gun with a bullet based on the size and the amount of gunpowder will be the impact. So when you have a standard 9mm and a bullet with 1% gunpowder, 10% gunpowder, then you have a bigger gun with a bigger bullet. Likewise, the amal of Nubuwa requires Yaqeen as well. So somebody came to Hazrat Abu Darda radiallahu an, and he said, Ya Aba Darda qad ihtaraqa baytuk. That uh, your house has burnt. So he said, Mahtaraqa, not possible. Qad ihtaraqa baytuk. Mahtaraqa. No, it didn't happen. Not possible. Afterwards, when the person returned, he said, what you have said is true. How is it possible that you were seated here and you knew that the house did not catch on fire? So he said, قَدْ عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ I was convinced that Allah will not allow that to happen لِكَلِمَاتْ سَمِئْتُهُنَّ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ From what I heard, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying مَنْ قَالَهُنَّ Whoever says his words in the morning then nothing لَمْ تُسِبْهُ مُسِيبَةً No calamity will befall this person in the evening and whoever says it in the evening لَمْ تُسِبْهُ مُسِيبَةً حَتَّى يُسْبِحْ تَلْ ذَ مَوْنِنْ What is the dua that you learned from Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta alayka tawakkaltu wa anta rabbu al-arshi al-azim ma sha allahu kan wa ma lam yashak lam yakun la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim أعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير وأن الله قد حاط بكل شيء علما اللهم إني أعوذ بك من شر نفسي ومن شر كل دابة أنت آخذ بناسيتها إن ربي على صراط مستقيم This is the dua I learned from جناب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so this yaqeen in the words of Allah and His Rasul should overpower us and we should not get caught by the apparent means. Yes, ulama have given permission to utilize conventional means for solving our problems. But where does the heart go at the first given moment? And that's why the beginning we should go through the 17 chapters or parts that was done in the beginning of Yaqeen. To understand this, they say there was a ICU unit in the hospital and people used to die at 3 p.m. every day on certain days of the week. So the medical staff, the doctors were perplexed and they tried to do research but they could not find a solution. Then they called the experts, the surgeons, they did research and they could not find a solution. Eventually, after exhausting all avenues, 
they gave up hope and they said medically we cannot find a tangible reason why people are passing away on these specific days at 3 p.m. One nurse cracked the formula one day while she was at the ward at 3 p.m. The door opened to the ward. They probably presumed it was, it was a haunted ICU unit or some uh, external forces. So that day at 3 p.m. the door of the ward slowly opened and the nurse noticed the door opening. And at that time, when the door opened in front of her, she seen a cleaner coming in. So as he came in, he started cleaning and the first thing before he done anything, he disconnected the life support machine and plugged him, his, plugged in his vacuum cleaner. The first thing he did was, he plugged in his vacuum cleaner and disconnected the life support machine. So sometimes where we think so the problem is and where the solution is, is Asman or Zameen between the heavens and the earth. So when in difficulties and hardships and different situations, Nabi Ali Salam has given us different solutions. So in the riwayat of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, Nabi Ali Salam used to say at a time of difficulties and hardships, La ilaha illallah al azim al halim, La ilaha illallah rabbul arsh al azim, La ilaha illallah rabbul samawati wa rabbul ard wa rabbul arsh al kareem. This is a riwayat in Bukhari and Muslim Sharif and Kana Ida Hazabahu Amr when Nabi Ali Salam was perplexed, when he was in difficulties, when he was in hardship, Muhaddithin Imam Noah has mentioned that Nazala Amrun Muhim O Asabahu Gham that when any concerning matter, difficult matter, any grief, any anxiety came to him, then he read this dua. Another riwayat in Tirmizi, أَنَّهُ كَانَ إِذَا أَكْرَبَهُ أَمُرٌ قَالَ When any difficulty came to me, he used to say, يَا حَيُّ يَا قِيُّمْ بِرَحْمَتِكَ أَسْتَغِيثُ يَا حَيُّ يَا قِيُّمْ بِرَحْمَتِكَ أَسْتَغِيثُ then in the Tirimzi Riwayat, إِذَا أَهَمَّهُ الْأَمْرُ When any difficulty hardships came, رَفَعَ رَأْسَوْ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ He should lift his head to the heavens and say, سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ يَا حَيُّ يَا قَيُّمِ يَا حَيُّ يَا قَيُّمِ كَانَ أَكْثَرُ The most common dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارُ So the habit of Anas رضي الله عن إذا أراد أي يدعو بدعوة دعا بها Whenever he used to make dua he should make sure this was part of his dua So even randomly whether we are engaged in work whether we are driving etc let us try to read this dua often, especially if a person is in difficulties and hardships. As Ali radiallahu anhu's riwayat, that uh, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam had taught me these words and had encouraged me in nazala bi karbun aw shidda. If any difficulty, hardships came to me, I should repeat these words. لا إله إلا الله الكريم العظيم سبحانه تبارك رب الأرش العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين. And it was the habit of Abdullah ibn Jafar that he used to read it a lot and utilize us and blow on the people who are ill and unwell. وَيُعَلِّمُهَا مِنْ بَنَاتِهِ And he used to teach his children, his daughters, thus dua as well. 
the riwayat of Abu Dawood, da'wat al-makrub. When a person is in difficulty and hardships, he should say, Allahumma, rahmataka arju, fala takilni ila nafsi tarfata'in. That Allah, I am hopeful of your mercy and do not leave me for the blink of an eye. Waslih li sha'ni kulla. And Ya Allah, correct all my matters and affairs. La ilaha illa anta. In Abu Dawood riwayat, where Nabi alayhi salam taught Hazrat Asma radi Allah anha, that should I not teach you some words that you said in the karb, in the time of difficulty, hardships. When any hardship difficulty comes, say, Allah, Allah, Rabbi, la ushriku bihi shay'a. Please watch ya. Allah, Allah, Rabbi, la ushriku bihi shay'a. Then other riwayat where a sahabi Hazrat Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu says, I heard my Nabi say, and I know some words that inni la a'lamu kalimatan la yakuluha makrub. I know some words, whatever difficulty a person is in, if he says these words, illa furrija anhu that difficulty that calamity that problem that hardship will be removed and that is the words of my brother Yunus alayhi salatu was salam fanada fi dhulumat what did he say in the darkness of the stomach of the fish la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin Another riwayat, Da'watu dhin noon idh da'a rabbahu fi batni al-hut. This is the same dua which Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam made. Any pious person that uses these words, illa stajaba lahu, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept his dua. So these are all idea which Nabi alayhi salatu was salam has taught us and we should try to make it a routine and a habit to learn these adiyya. Rewrite Amr ibn Shaib that Nabi alayhi salam taught him this dua in the time of difficulties and hardships in Tirmizi Abu Dawud Nasai. أعوذ بكلمات الله التامة من غضبه وشر بعده ومن همزات الشياطين وأي يحضرون. So when a person is in difficulties, hardships, and Abdullah ibn Amr used to teach this dua to his children and those that were not fluent enough to learn it, he used to write it down. فَعَلَّكَهُ عَلَيْهِ And he would put it on them. He would write it on a piece of paper and put it on them. Likewise, if a person is in difficulties, in hardships, in grief, مَنْ أَصَابَهُ هَمٌ If a person is in grief, difficulty, then he should say these words here. Allahumma inni abduk ib ni abdik ibn amatik nasiyati biyadik madin fiya hukm adlun fiya qadaq as'aluka bi kull ismin huwa laka sammayta bihi nafsak aw anzaltahu fi kitabik aw allamtahu ahadan min khalkik aw istatharta bihi fi ilm al-ghayb 'indak so this dua and he continues an taj'al al-quran نور صدري وربيع قلبي وجلع أذني وذهب همي. So somebody said, يا رسول الله ونبي الله. For unfortunate is a person who does not know these words. So he said, yes, أجل definitely. So say it and teach people. For whoever says this يا من قالهن. Whoever sees these words, Ya Adhab Allah Huznahu, Allah will remove his grief, difficulties, hardships, wa atala farhahu, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lengthen 
his happiness and elation means Allah will remove difficulties after difficulties comes ease and happiness and pleasure and elation. So a person should try to read these dua. They say there is a asma husna among those words when utilized, your dua is accepted. Nabi alayhi salam also taught Ali radiallahu an that should I not say you such words إِذَا وَقَعْتَ فِي وَرْتَةٍ قُلْتَهَا When you are in a situation of destruction, threat, harm, risk, say these words بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ When you say these words فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَلَى يَسْرِفُ بِهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the barakah of these words will remove and dispel ma sha'a min anwa'il bala no matter what calamities, trials, afflictions, distress, misfortune you are in we are hopeful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove all difficulties likewise if a person is in a situation and he fears that some people will harm him as a sheikh especially during the time of petition recommended this dua to people to read إِذَا خَافَ قَوْمًا when you fear a certain nation, a tribe group of people harming you, invading you then say this dua يَا أَلَّهُمَّ إِنَّا نَجْعَلُكَ فِي نُحُورِهِمْ وَنَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شُرُورِهِمْ a person who says this dua and one person said, I made amal on this dua, which is in Abu Dawood, Nasai, etc. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I was traveling one day on a train, and I seen some perpetrators who were planning and plotting to harm me. But every time that they advanced, they went back. And the entire journey, I traveled a long distance, but I was not harmed. And as I disembarked, I inquired from somebody, I seen people advancing and retracting. What was the reason? He said, we intended to attack you, but every time we attacked, we seen a wild animal next to you, ready to attack us. So the Amal of Nubawa has power. We need to resort to these Amal. Likewise, if a person has debt and he cannot pay his debt, so somebody came to Hazrat Ali radiallahu an, rewrite in Tirmizi, and he said that uh, I, I need to uh, get my freedom, can you help me? Fa'inni. So he said, I've got grief, humum lazimatni wa duyun. So I got grief, I've got stress, I've got debt. I've got this on my shoulders, what can you help me? So I said, Ali radiallahu anhu said that if you have debt like mithlu jabalin, like the mountain, ad-da'u anka, Allah will help you and make sure inshallah that your debt gets paid. Read this dua, ya Allah makfini bi halalika an haramik wa aghnini bi fadlika amman siwak. That read this dua and inshallah you will be hopeful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove your debt. Likewise, another sahabi came to Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and he said that I've got a lot of grief and I've got a lot of debt. So Nabi alayhi salam taught him this dua here also. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal huzni وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الْجُبْنِ وَالْبُخْلِ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ غَلَبَةِ الدَّيْنِ وَقَهْرِ الرِّجَالِ Say this dua often. The Sahabi said, I read this dua quite often. ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ عَنِّي دَيْنِي وَقَضَى عَنِّي ذَهَبَ اللَّهُ عَنِّي هُزْنِي وَهَمِّي وَقَضَى عَنِّي دَيْنِي That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed all my grief and my debts were paid off so these are all adiyah, let us try to learn them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq 
of making amal wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alam.